Welcome to this edition of Audiobook. On today's edition, we have Blue Butterfly, Part 1. Written by Susan Diane Mitchell and also audiobook by Susan Diane Mitchell in her own voice. What a treat. Sit back, relax, get comfortable, and enjoy the book. Appreciate the love. King Cooley, we in the build. Ken, I will tell you about him. I will need to. And when I do, I will need you to believe everything I tell you. Everything. But I can't speak of him right now. Not yet. I will, though. It won't make sense if I don't. But for now, bear with me. The memory of Kim is all that keeps me sane sometimes, and I cannot share them just yet. I do not trust you yet. As I walk through the arched doorway, the large living room beyond shone softly, and I felt a sense of awe. I remember walking through the doorway and everything was filtered through such a delicate shade of blue, the color of a bird's egg one might find walking through a garden, or unexpectedly on the concrete of a city sidewalk, birds chirping about the birth or death of a sibling chick or chick baby from nests made of scraps and nestled in the corners of buildings, reminding me that life and death is everywhere. And Wanda, in a soft cream-colored damask-covered French provincial chair, sitting with her baby, nursing. In my memory as a child, and now, Wanda seemed to be surrounded by the pale blue light that shone through the long, sheer white curtains, and her dress was chiffon. A bassinet of white wicker stood draped in white, and soft yellow lace. I had never seen such beauty as the wonder of the pale yellow blanket that cast a veil as she nursed. I sensed the holy in the room, and I had a curious urge to sit on my knees at her feet. Janet, my mother's rather silly, vain, and sexy friend, who remained forever single and looking like a teacher from the 60s television show, room 222, and whom I had secretly worshipped and wanted to grow up to be like, paled forever in the blue light emanating from Wanda. At that moment, I beheld God. They had seen my mother grow up, and now the children of their friends were bringing grandchildren home, and all was well in the world. These were homes on a street well populated by the black affluent class of Northern California who tended to socialize and educate, worship and marry into and around the same circles of well-groomed black families, families whose grandparents and parents had migrated from the South in waves spanning some three generations, come up and away from the South, from Tennessee, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Missouri, creating a community of families that formed Oakland Jack and Jill chapter, the East Bay Lynx chapter, doctors, lawyers, and dental offices, teachers, social and civic leaders, publishers, and professors who presented their daughters at Cotillion and sent sons and daughters back to the South to attend the finest historically black colleges and universities in the country, where they became Greek in their blackness joining fraternities, sororities, and all manner of secret societies. I remember leaving my body and blinking out, then waking up hours later, the sun dropping low in the sky, and Kim silhouette a quiet shadow in the corner chair. Kim. Yes, my love. His voice was warm and reassuring in the dark, though it seemed to come from far away, although I could see a shadow in the chair. I mean, we never, we never went there like that before. I can't quit. A thick silence. The mothers instructed her that money, currency, was like water. 
best in constant motion, with the best intentions and memories attached to it. Yes. Something like that. Silence. The Zaza Dravindrino. I mean, we never, we never went there like that before. I had the strangest dream, but I can't recall it. Just images, and they're leaving now. I dreamed of some kind of green women. What? The Zaza what? What was that? The Zaza Dravindrino. There are years I cannot remember. They are as a mist, a gray haze over them. The years following Ken. I can barely think of it now. The time lost. The relationships that faltered and faded away by my own sheer neglect. He slid into the bed beside me and his warmth was like a fire. I slid back into a blessed sleep once again and when I awoke, the sun was shining and Ken was gone.